Hey everybody, John here. Okay, so this is my last video of the day, and what we're going to talk about is uh, Civil War statues and the removal of them from uh, public areas. And this is a really unfortunate and sad uh, story that I'm going to tell you. I understand uh, the idea of people wanting to remove the Civil War statues because of what they represent to them. Uh, and the sad thing is that what the Civil War statues re represent to those people is not at all what the Civil War statues represented to the people who erected them. Now think about that. Okay, so here's what I mean. Let's think about this. Back during the Civil War, the South was decimated, completely obliterated. It was a bad deal down there, okay? Uh, now, just before the Civil War, people lived basically in farming communities. It was very farming intensive. So uh, there was really no reason for you to travel outside of or trade outside of your immediate community, okay? So there's that. Now, you've got that communal setup. You've got the decimation of the Civil War. And the South is hurting. And what you have are opportunistic carpetbaggers who are going from the North to the South. And uh, for some of you people are sitting there wondering, John, what the hell is an opportunistic carpetbagger? And I will tell you, an opportunistic carpetbagger is like a, a shyster salesman. Okay? And what they would do is they would literally go out to the hall or the living room, whatever, and pick up uh, the, the carpet there. And fold it in half and sew the edges of the uh, the carpet and basically turn it into like a, a, a satchel or a, a carrying bag. Uh, they'd put a handle on it or uh, cut uh, some of the upper part uh, to make a, a, a straps that they would carry it. But they literally turned a carpet, like I said, by folding it and sewing the, the perimeter into a bag. And this was so that they could quickly move from the north to the south and sell their wares. They didn't have time, I guess, to order a Samsonite and wait for it to arrive at Sears. Uh, that being the case, the other thing that was going on was we had the advent of, uh, of modern foundries, modern by the Civil War standards, uh, foundries uh, casting the cannons and all that. Now we have a lot of foundries sitting uh, uh, unused and uh, unproductive. So what would happen is a carpetbagger would roll into a community with a catalog, and there are two catalogs that I'm aware of, and I can't recall offhand where these companies are. I want to say one is in New York and the other is in Ohio, but that's just conjecture. And this was a catalog of made-to-order bronze statue pieces, okay? Uh, and you could uh, basically pick and choose what you wanted your statue to look like. And the carpetbagger pitched to the community the idea that there's not going to be any na national monument for your loved one who just died, or loved ones. There's not going to be any uh, state or regional monument uh, or acknowledgement of the death of your loved one. If y'all want to remember your boy, what you're going to have to do is belly up for a statue. And so you'd have a bunch of people in this church or this uh, Grange Hall or whatever, and they're all sitting there thinking, shit, this guy's right. If I want uh, Billy Bob's memory to be uh, uh, immortalized, we need to... Uh, to you know, cough up for a, a statue that we'll put out here in the, uh, you know, in the front uh, square. And so uh, a community would do that with the idea that, you know, uh, a dozen families chipped in to immortalize and remember their uh, dozen uh, or so family members who died in the war. And uh, sometimes uh, those names would be carved on the base. Uh, sometimes they weren't. And then what would happen, uh, entertainingly enough, is the carpetbagger would go to the next town and tell people like, hey, y'all need to buy a statue because the people upstream at Sila City bought another statue. You know, so it's basically keeping up with the Joneses kind of idea. And so 
uh, they sold. Now, what I'm talking about as far as statues is maybe the guy standing there with the musket, or maybe that was the basic setup, or the guy uh, standing or on the horse or something like that, or just the guy standing there, no musket. Uh, though that, that's the majority of the kind of statue that were being sold into uh, lo localities. I'm not talking about the giant Robert E. Lees out in front of some uh, southern college or university or something. There are a number of those, uh, but these little, and, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, I think. Uh, you, you're more apt to see that sort of uh, setup than the giant uh, thing that would be out in front of some uh, courthouse in Charleston or something, so, say. Anyway, so uh, they would, you know, play communities off of each other and say, well, the guys up, uh, upstream bought uh, this, so you need to buy that. And part of the idea of being able to customize the thing was if the uh, community uh, brought together a, uh, an armor uh, or a cavalry or an infantry company or whatever, and that's what uh, came from that area, then the person, the, the statue, uh, the components that made up that statue would be primarily uh, reflective of that kind of uh, unit. Uh, and how can you tell this? Uh, look at the faces of the statues. Uh, I do, as we travel around. I'm really into this. So you'll begin to notice that the faces are all alike. And if you uh, have the gumption, uh, you can Google uh, Civil War uh, statue catalog, maybe bronze statue catalog. And you'll see uh, the people have scanned uh, images from those catalogs. And you'll see you can you know get the heads and that sort of stuff. Now, why is this important? It's because going back to the initial uh, premise of my uh, argument is those statues did not represent the racism and the hatred, and the uh, slavery, and all that sort of stuff. I would put to you that the Confederate flag uh, represents that, because that's more uh, national, as far as the South goes, uh, Southern nation. Anyway, the statues themselves, I would say, are the equivalent of carving my uncle's name or my grandfather's name or something into a, uh, a wall or uh, I mean it's the equivalent of the names on the wall at the uh, Arizona Memorial in Hawaii or the Vietnam Memorial in Washington DC it's something along those lines and so the sad thing is that by uh, scouring the uh, the neighborhoods and the, the, the communities and pulling down these uh, these statues, what we're doing is basically robbing uh, those people of their remembrance of their loved ones. Funny thing is, they don't seem to really care, so if they don't care and aren't suing anybody about it, I guess, uh, why should we? Anyway, so there's my observation about that. If you have any comments or questions, uh, do me a favor, leave them down below. And do me a, do, do me a favor, please subscribe. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. John out.